Good day, good day. Uh, just wanted to bring you all greetings. My name is Evangelist Geraldine Andre, and I serve faithfully under the leadership of Bishop Donald Battle in Jonesboro, Georgia. I wanted to just bring greetings and salutations to Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in Goldsboro, North Carolina. I wanted to greet the angel of the house, Reverend Dr. Winford Galman Jr. I wanted to bless everyone right now that is listening to me and uh, just wanted to reassure you that you are in for a treat at this moment. I will try not to be before you too long, but um, not too long ago, I believe it was either last week or the week before, God had uh, impressed something really heavy on my heart and um, I actually took it to social media and I went and I shared it. And I believe that it's it's a now word for his people. It's a now word for those of us that are believing in God, those of us that are relying on his promises and, and needing him for a rima, for a now word. So I pray that this blesses you. And I wanted to kind of encourage you today to just hold on, be strong, because God's got you on his mind. So the title of my short sermonette, I guess I would call it, it would be, He Got Me Tatted. And, you know, of course, when we think of tatted, right, we think of the word tattoo, <laughs> right? We think of um, when someone goes and engraves something on their body. You know, we see a lot of people do it when there's people that pass or if there's a loved one, their child or so forth, you, you, you get someone tatted on you because, you know, you, you think it's important. You want them to forever be for you. But the scripture that I want to submit to you today uh, is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 49, verse 16. And it's, it's very simple, but it's profound. And it reads, see, I have engraved you in the palm of of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. And that's God talking to us. That's God talking to me. That's God talking to you, reminding us that he's got us tatted. He's got us engraved in the palm of his hands. Now, let's go ahead and dissect this real quick, right? First and foremost, I believe that God is asking us to see and I believe that when God is asking us to see, he's, he's asking us to turn our face and look at him. Because at times when, when the world gets crazy, when, when things are happening, when the bills are before us, when life is getting crazy, we tend to remove our focus off of God and we focus on the things that's happening around us. We focus on the problems. We focus on the tribulations. We focus on the afflictions. But God is asking us to see, to look at him. He's a person that's revealed himself to us so that we may know him, right? The Bible tells us that I want to know him and in the power of his resurrection. We have to see, we have to change the way we look. We have to change our outlook each and every day to focus on him. Because the only way our, our comfort is going to come, the only way our strength is going to come, it is only when we focus on on him when we focus on God when we focus on Christ alone so first and foremost we have to see you got to turn your face towards him you got to turn your face towards the cross you got to turn your attention to the one that made you the promise you got to turn your face to the source not your resource your job is your resource, but God in heaven, he's your source. You have to see him as the source. You have to see him as the way maker. You have to see him as the promise keeper. You have to see him as the healer, not the doctors. The doctors are the resource, but we have to see, we have to focus on God and him alone. So that way we may be able to see the promises. He says, see, look, focus on me, put your attention on me. Allow me to reveal myself to you because only when you turn your attention to me, God, only when we turn our attention to God, that we will be able to see that he has engraved us in the palm of his hands. So I wanted to remind you 
right now, if you're listening to me under the sound of my voice, I want to encourage you to turn your focus back to God. I don't know what you're focusing on. I don't know what distractions may try to have you looking elsewhere, but you need to focus on God. Think about it. If you're driving down the road, (laughs) right? You can't be looking back behind you because that's not where you're going. That's where you come from. Catch it. But you have to focus on the road and what's ahead so that way you may be able to see where you're going. So you have to be able to focus on God so that way you be able to know where he's taking you. You can see how far you've come from, glory to God, but you have to look and see and look at him and focus on him so that way you'll be able to see exactly where you're going. Don't let the craziness of this world, don't let the tribulations, don't let the trials, don't let the issues, don't let the things derail your attention. Keep your eye focused on him so that way you will be able to see what he is doing in your life. Now, the next thing that I love is that, you know, he gives us hope, right? He tells us to see, to look at him because when we keep our minds on him, those things that are pure, right? Those things that are good, those things that are noble, those things that are righteousness, the word of God tells us to focus on those things because that's where our peace comes from. Not focusing on the problems, right? We, it, 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 you know, what's important is that not that we tell God how big our problems are, but is that we tell our problems how big our God is. That's when it matters. That's when it counts. That's when this testimony becomes more powerful because he knows the issues and there's nothing wrong with, with taking things to the Lord or in prayer and, and, and letting him know the things that we need. But we also sometimes got to look at that mountain and tell it to be thou removed and cast into the sea. We have to be able to focus on him because when we focus on him we find hope we find redemption we find love we find an answer to our prayers we find hope a future and an expected end because god tells us that he has he he is here to give us security that's that's his hope right he says that he's engraved us in the palm of his hands and i'm gonna get to that but he also tells us that he, that our walls are forever before him don't think of like the physical walls right? These are walls of security, meaning like God is always thinking about the best things for us. He's always thinking about how to make, make our way straight. He's always thinking about how to, how to, how to get us out of that situation. He's always thinking about how to, you know, be the way maker, the promise keeper. Our walls are forever before him. Our supplications are forever before him. Our needs are forever before him. So don't think for one second that the issue that you've gone through just because he has not answered you yet, that he's not thinking about you. Your walls are forever before him. Your bills are forever before him. Your spouse, your children, they're forever before him. That manager on your job that's getting on your last nerves is forever before him. Whatever you are going through are forever before him. Your walls are forever before him. The, the, those, those imaginary walls, you know, those, um, how do I say those metaphoric walls, they can't keep God out. They are forever before him. The issues, the things we go through, they are forever before him. He has not forgotten you, daughter. He has not forgotten you, son. He has not forgotten you, preacher. He has not forgotten you, lay uh, worker. He has not forgotten you, usher. He has not forgotten you, deacon, deaconess, prophet, prophetess. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten your labor of love. He has not forgotten your sacrifice. He's not forgotten your seed of sacrifice. He's not forgotten, you know, when you serve to the, at the church late at night to one o'clock in the morning, your walls are forever before him. He has promised to you are yes. And amen. It may not be on your timetable. He may not come when you want him, but I promise you, my God is always on time. Just at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ask the people in the Bible, ask Abraham, when he was about to sacrifice him, ask about him. He may not come when you want him to, but I promise you, he is always on time. Your walls are forever before him. You know why? Because he is a promise keeper. He will come through. He will make a way. He will part the Red Sea. He will scatter your enemies. He will humble them and make them your footstool. He will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies because your walls are forever before him. 
You just got to look. You just got to focus on him because he reminds us in that very same scripture in Isaiah 49 verse 16. He says that I have engraved you in the palm of my hands and I saved that for last because what I want to submit to you today is that he's the best person, the best person to have you engraved, right? I tell people all the time, you know, even if somebody gets you tatted, but God forbid they could cover it, right? They could forget you. But what I want to submit to you is that a lot of times the reason why people do those things is because when they engrave somebody on their body, it's because they want that thing is important to them. Every time they look at it, they remind them, they remind them of that person or that thing, you know, that they're so fond of, that they're so enamored with. It reminds them of, of a love, of a, of a, an appreciation, of an affection that they have towards that person or that thing or that scripture or that phrase. So that's what God is saying. He's saying that I love you that much that in my hands, imagine if someone got something tatted in their hands, right? They would see it every day because they use their hands every day. And I know that our God doesn't have physical hands but it's metaphoric It's to show you that means that that wherever he looks wherever he's he's doing his bidding that he has you engraved right there he cannot forget you you're you're very important you're vital to his to his plan you are important to him you are the apple of his eye so he has us engraved in the palm of his hands right this poetic imagery is just is just to show us how how mindful our heavenly father is of us. How mindful he is of us. Think about it, right? A mother that breastfeeds their child or just carries their child for a while. You think they could forget their child? No, that child is forever engraved in their hearts. It's the same thing. God says that you are engraved in the palm of my hands. God is saying, I couldn't forget you even if I wanted you. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't forget you. Because where I have placed you is so vital, it's so important that you are the apple, that you are important to me, that I see you, that, that your concerns are forever before me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, let's, we got to remember the promises. When the enemy may come in, right, like a flood, we got to allow for the word to, to just rise up and be a standard in our lives. We have to allow for the word of God to just be a fortress, to be our strength, to be a constant reminder that he is with us and he will never ever leave us that he is God all by himself and he doesn't need to ask anybody permission to neither care for you to deliver you to set you free or to come through for you he is your heavenly father and your walls are forever before him he says that he has us engraved in the palm of his hands now my bishop right Donald E. Battle he likes to preach a message and it says whose hands are you in and what I love about that message is it's so profound because he says that, you know, it depends whose hands you are in because when something of value changes hands, the value goes up, right? For example, my bishop likes to say that if you put a basketball in his hands, it may not be worth much of anything, but if you take that very exact same basketball, and you put it in the hands of Michael Jordan, oh, good God on Zion, that basketball's value has gone up. If you put it in the hand of Steph Curry, that, va that basketball's value has gone up. If you put it in the hands of LeBron James, that value of that basketball has gone up. If you put a football in my bishop's hand, it may not be of any value. Come on, somebody, I know you catching this, right? But if you take that exact same football and you put it in the hand of Deion Sanders, that value has gone up. You put it in the hands of uh, Palomau, right, from the Sixers, that uh, from the um, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, right? He's retired. That value of that football has gone up. If you take a golf club, you put it in my bishop's hand, you put it in my hand, it may not be worth much, but I I promise you, if you put it in the hands of Tiger Woods, that golf club has gone up. I'm a tennis player. I love tennis. I played for, 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 for my high school, right? I loved it. I think in my mind, I was pretty good. But a tennis ball, a tennis racket in my hands may not be worth much. You may say, Evangelist, I love you. But listen, a tennis ball and a tennis racket, it just is what it is. But if you take that exact same tennis ball and you take that exact same tennis racket and you put it in the hand of my icon, Serena Williams, Venus Williams, that value has gone up. Evangelist, 
What are you saying? I think I know what you're getting at. Well, whose hands are you in? You are a child of God. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. You are a disciple of God. So the fact that you are in the palm of his hands means that your value has gone up. I don't care what life has thrown at you. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what type of uh, issues you've encountered. I don't care what happened in your childhood. I don't care who touched you wrong. I don't care who cut in front of you. I don't care what the teachers have said about you. They might have said that you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't amount to anything, but baby, you got to remind that devil that you are engraved in the palm of his hand. You got to tell the enemy that he's got you tatted, that God's got you tatted. He's got you engraved in the palm of his hands. I don't care what the doctor's report says. I don't care what the... Uh, what they've diagnosed you with, right? I just want to remind you on today that God's got you tatted, that he wants you to see, right? He wants you to look and focus on him. And he wants to remind you today that you are engraved in the palm of his hands and that your walls are forever before him, right? I don't care what the divorce decree says. God's got you engraved in the palm of his hands. I don't care what the foreclosure, what the bank notice says. He's got you engraved in the palm of his hands. I don't care what is going on around you. I don't care if your foundation is shaky. I just come to encourage you on today that God has not forgotten about you, that you are the apple of his eye and that you're important to him and that he's got you engraved. He's got you in the palm of his hands. You are important to him and he loves you so much that he sent me here to remind you on today that don't you dare look down. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare throw in the towel, but you got to remember whose hands you are in. Baby, in my hands, right? You may not be worth much. Much, but oh good God in Zion, you are worth everything because you are in the palm of his hands, right? You take a hundred dollar bill, you could spit on it, you could step on it, you could God forbid find it in some throw up or whatever, but it's still a hundred dollar bill. It doesn't matter what it's gone through. It doesn't matter the dirt that's been thrown on its name. Come on, somebody better catch this. It doesn't matter who's talked about that hundred dollar bill. It doesn't matter who stepped on that hundred dollar bill. It doesn't matter who's mishandled that hundred dollar bill, but it still has its worth. It still has value. You still have your worth. You still have value. You're still important. It does not matter what you go through. It really matters whose hands you are in. It matters who is your source. It matters who's your daddy. It matters who you're connected to. Don't you know that you are royalty? Don't you know that you are a royal priesthood? Don't you know that you were bought at a price, that you are expensive? So the next time the enemy may want to come and try to talk to you and tell you that you're anything less, you got to remind the enemy. You got to look at that devil square in the eye right in the face. And you got to remind that devil that you are engraved in the power, in the palm of God's hand. And in and, and engraved in the palm of his hand comes with power, comes with righteousness, comes with faithfulness, comes with covering, comes with promises, comes with hope and peace, a future and an expected end. So next time you want to give up, I want you to remind yourself who you are. Y'all seen the movie uh, Wakanda, right? Y'all seen Black Panther? And the mama had to say, remember who you are. Who are you? Remember who you are. When life tries to knock you down, remember who you are. When things try to go crazy, remember whose you are. Remember whose hands you're in. Remember who's got you engraved in the palm of his hands. Remember who, rem uh, remember, think on those things. Remember who told you to focus and see what he's done. Remember who, who, who told you that, that your walls are forever before him. It's God in heaven. It's your heavenly father, the most powerful a uh, uh, person in this world and, 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 and beyond this world, he has us engraved in the palm of his hands. So don't, so no longer from this day forward, don't you dare look down unless if it's to pray. And once you say, amen, you lift your head back up. Don't you walk with your head bowed down. I know life is crazy. We're all battling our own little issues. Trust me. When I made, when I first, uh, when God first laid this in my spirit over a week ago, it's because I got a doctor's report that almost knocked the wind out of me. And I said, God, I've been praying. I've been trying to do things right. And this is what you let the doctors tell me. You let the doctors tell me this, that I got to do this again. Have I not been through enough medical stuff the previous year? And God said, baby, <laughs> I have you engraved ah, in the palm of my hands. And I had to remember that I am not my own 
And then I had to be reminded that this too is for the glory of God. We're all dealing with stuff. We're all dealing with things. We all have our trials. We all have our tribulations. We all have our thorns. Nobody's perfect. Your pastor ain't perfect. (laughs) The ushers aren't perfect. The ministers, the deacons, the deaconesses, we are all dealing with something. But there's hope, somebody. Come on. There's hope. God got us. God got you. He got me. And we're going to be okay. But you cannot let the enemy tell you otherwise. You cannot allow the enemy anymore to play mind tricks with you. There's a battleground that takes place in your mind that you have to overcome each and every day. That you have to wake up in the morning and give God the praise for another day. And you have to go about your day with determination and knowing whose hands you're in. Okay? So I want to just encourage you on today to let you know that God has not forgotten about you. Yes, you. Yes, I understand you made a mistake yesterday. I understand you made a mistake last week. I understand you probably made a mistake 30 minutes before you was listening. To, you were listening to me. But guess what? You're still precious. You're still amazing. You're still the apple of his eye. I know. I know the world may be judging you. I know maybe your family may be judging you. You might be the black sheep, but baby, in God's eyes, <laughs> you are engraved in the palm of his hands. I know maybe at work, you're not on their favorite list, but in God's eyes, in his hands, you're valuable. You're priceless. You were bought at an expensive price. And don't you dare forget that. Don't you dare let the enemy tell you otherwise. Don't you dare let the enemy trick you out of your birthright. Catch that. Don't you dare let the enemy tell you otherwise. You born again, man, woman of God. Walk with your head high. Be encouraged on today. I don't know what you're going through. And even this may be for what you're about to go through. Because storms come unexpectedly. But I just wanted to encourage you and remind you. To see. To focus on on him to focus on God the solid rock the chief cornerstone I want to encourage you today to see that him and him alone has you engraved right here in the palm of his hands I wanted to remind you that he has not forgotten about you he can't because your walls are forever before him things you want the things you need the things you go through are forever before him So you be encouraged. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak and to minister to you on today. I pray this blessed you. I pray that whatever that you may be going through, that you may be dealing with, that you are reminded that you have a comforter, that you have hope, that the Holy Spirit, the Paracletos, is here to see you through and that there's hope, a future and an expected end. Why? Because he's got me tatted. See, he's got me engraved in the palm of his hands. Once again, God bless you. Yeah, my name is Evangelist Geraldine Andre. Greetings all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, uh, under the leadership of Bishop Donald Battle at Divine Faith Ministries International. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you to my dear friend for inviting me, Miss Barbara. Uh, on this prayer call. Be blessed.